video is about rebuilding uh, Capilano uh, helm unit. And uh, the particular one we're looking at here, these two units have come out of a 1978 Blue Water Yacht um, coastal cruiser. Boat has a flybridge. So the one I'm actually showing you here is fully reassembled. A um, couple of things to give you for a reference point. This is, of course, where um, the wheel is. Screws right on here. This right here is a turning valve that basically, well, not a valve, but an adjustment for the number of turns, how quickly the rudder um, moves. So backed out, the rudder is going to move slowly. Pushed in, the rudder is going to move faster per turn. I'm going to show you why when we get to the broken down uh, unit. This unit I've already rebuilt and reassembled. Um, because it's a flybridge unit, there's no connections on top. Because this is the highest unit and the whole system is gravity based, this is where you would add oil. This one stays capped. This is used in the um, center, the console unit, um, because this one feeds it from up top. So they're interconnected. So it's kind of cool about the system. They're both connected and they both connect down to a ram in the back, which of course turns the rudder. So I'm going to take this one out of the way. And we're going to move to one that I've already disassembled. And so we're looking at the same thing here. Okay. Um, so this side over here, we have a port and we have starboard. And on top, we have a fill plug, which we won't be using. Uh, we will initially, but once the flybridge unit is hooked up, we won't pull this because if you pulled this, you potentially could have oil coming out of it because the oil from the flybridge system would come in through here and literally start to pour out the top of this. So that's why uh, my particular uh, bridge is very difficult to get this out. Um, it's not intended to fill there. And then the bottom is used as part of the system to return um, uh, oil. So basically what happens here is you turn the wheel, it moves oil to either one side or the other. But in doing that, there's a couple things that has to happen. It has to pull oil from the one side and push the oil out the other side. And any oil that comes back to keep the system in balance comes back um, into this uh, unit. So how does all this work? Well, basically, if you look inside, you'll see that this round thing here has a slit on it. If you can see it right down there on the side. Let me see if I can get a screwdriver to point to it. Right down here is a slit okay this slit right here is going to be feeding oil or pulling oil from port this side over here is going to be feeding or pulling oil from starboard now there are check valves down in here bearing check valves that i have not pulled out yet um they're relatively simple so i won't, I won't go into it much um Basically, what happens is this guy right here slides in here. Now, I'm, I'm leaving off some bearings, so I'm just doing this for show you proof of concept here. This slides in there, and those little holes down in there get plugged by ball bearings. These right here. On top of the ball bearing goes a spring. Okay, so what the heck, I'll just do it so we can see it. Put the ball bearing in. You don't have to really worry about getting right in plot spot because then you can just move it and you see it, it's in there now. Okay, on top of that is going to go. Now, I guess what I should do here is show you all the parts. These are all the parts taken out. These are basically the plungers, and inside it are these springs. And the spring goes inside here on top. Then this little plug goes up on top. And lastly, the little plunger goes on top. Okay, so notice I can push down and pull up on this, right? So when I push down on this, if there's oil underneath it, it's gonna squirt it out a hole that is on the side. If you can look right down there, if you look in the left side, you can see there's a hole right over in here. 
Okay, there you see it. That hole is going to have oil injected into it, which goes to that centerpiece I was showing you. The centerpiece is going to then be either left or right, and it's going to shoot oil into that side of the system, port or starboard. At the same time, it needs to get the oil from somewhere. So while this thing's spinning, another cylinder over here is going to be sucking oil in. And when it sucks in, it's going to suck in from whatever side it's on. Okay. So basically, the system is one of these is pushing oil, and one of these will be pulling oil in at the same time. As it rotates around, the next one in line will push oil or pull oil. Now, how does that happen? It's actually quite ingenious, but there is um, this mechanism here that floats on top of some bearings and sits on top of all these guys. And the lid that goes on top of it is making this cockeyed. Okay, see this adjuster right here is going to make that cockeyed. So as it rotates around, it's going to push some down and let some come up. So well, the important components here is that the ball bearing at the very end of that that I dropped in, that is going to seal when the cylinder is pushed down. The oil is going to go down, the bearing will be in place, so the oil will go out the side hole. Now if it's pulling up, the bearing is going to come up and it's going to let oil come into the cylinder through that hole, the main hole that we see right there. As this thing rotates around and pushes down on some and lets other ones come up, each cylinder will either be evacuated of oil or pull in oil. It's a pretty ingenious system. Um, there's no electronics to it. And probably the most complicated thing is uh, the bearing and the spring that goes with it. So as I take this apart, a couple things to note here. There's a little spring. Oh, mine has fallen out, and it's in there. That's one of the things I was worried about. See that? That's one of the things you have to worry about. Um, probably went in okay, but and now I'm going to pull this out so we can get to it. Okay. When you disassemble yours, you don't have to disassemble it any more than this. You'll see that there's some retaining uh, pins here, clips here and here. You don't need to take those apart. You can leave this entirely together and just clean it really good. Um... The spring, as I just mentioned, can fall out. It should stay together. So you got to worry about that. You don't want to lose that spring and you don't want to lose these ball bearings. Now the other th component to it that's a little interesting, um, this bearing sits on the bottom, which this uh, rotates on. One time I rebuilt and I left it out, you'll know it because you won't be able to spin it. The washer goes on first, then the bearing goes on, then another washer, and then you put your whole your whole uh, thing on top of it. So it goes right in there on top of that. I'm going to assume that if you've taken it apart, you are taking photos as you go and you're watching what's happened. I'm merely showing this to explain a little bit of how it actually works. So the system is pretty straightforward. Um, how do you service it? Well, you got to clean it. Uh, as you can tell here, the sides, this is metal on metal. And you can see by the scrapings here that it does scrape it. It looks to me that one of the worst things you can do with this is run it low on oil. If you run it low on oil, you're going to have metal on metal, and you're going to cause filings that get in there. Did I find them? Absolutely. I had tons in here. The uh, thing was very dirty. Um, and I would imagine that that is not a good state at all. Um, so cleaning the oil, replacing the oil... And cleaning this out is probably going to make this thing um, run really well. Now, as far as wear parts, I haven't really found any. Other than what I was just talking about, most of the stuff has survived in pretty good condition. And this sucker is quite old. You see, a lot of stuff's not worn. The bearings are really good. So really what it comes down to is making sure it's not leaking. And that's probably why most of you have taken yours apart like me. Um, one of the leak points is actually... Two of the leak points actually are found here in the front. Now, just for purposes, this is going to go on here like this, right? You're going to have the main shaft coming out of this. Where would you get your leaks? Well, right here, 
um, a nice seal, big thick seal goes right in here. 